Continuing our open learning series now as Encyclopedia Galactica views the panoply of the universe through some of the world's most powerful telescopes. On mountain tops the world over, astronomers have perched their telescopes. This is the Observatoire du Pic du Midi in the French Pyrenees. And in the hills of New South Wales, a joint Anglo-Australian observatory. In Hawaii, above the clouds, the telescopes of several nations. At over 4,000 meters, they're halfway through the atmosphere. Up here, their images of the cosmos are virtually free of atmospheric distortion. This clear eye on the sky is the world's largest telescope, the American 10-meter Keck. And in South America, high in the Chilean Andes, Astronomers from the north peer into space from the European Southern Observatory. The universe is their field of study. To the naked eye, a canvas of tranquility. Through the instruments of astronomers, a restless firmament of life, death and renewal, and of infinite fascination. On Earth, we're bombarded by information from space, radiation that comes in at the speed of light right across the spectrum. In the ultra-short wavelengths, there are gamma rays. This is a gamma ray observatory in Earth orbit. Further down the spectrum, X-ray. The picture, a pocket of gas trapped in a cluster of galaxies. A hint that one day, the universe may collapse. In the middle of the spectrum, the Hubble Space Telescope picks up visible light, ultraviolet and near-infrared. All the infrared wavelengths are scanned by COBE, the Cosmic Microwave Background Explorer. This, a remarkable COBE picture of our galaxy, the Milky Way. At the lower end of the spectrum, radio waves. Gigantic receivers that search the heavens for whispers from the beginning of time. And in the wavelengths of visible light, traditional telescopes pursue the wonders of optical astronomy. Optical telescopes come in two forms. One is a refractor. Light is simply collected through a large lens and magnified in an eyepiece. It's the oldest type of telescope. The refractor was first used by the Italian astronomer Galileo. The second, a reflector, was thought up by Isaac Newton. Light entering the telescope from the left is reflected back up the tube to a smaller mirror which in turn bounces the image to an eyepiece. The reflector is the basic design of most modern telescopes. Its main mirror is like a great bucket collecting light. It can be built much bigger than a lens because it's more easily supported. So an image entering the reflector would first bounce off the big mirror, then off the small mirror and through a focal point to be recorded and stored electronically. Rather than squinting through telescopes, today's astronomers analyze computer images. Or they study pictures photographed through their instruments. Or spectrograms showing the composition of stars and whether galaxies are coming or going.
there's always atmospheric shimmer through even the best placed telescopes. Hence the Hubble Space Telescope, designed to observe the cosmos from the crystal clarity of Earth orbit. But Hubble had a problem. It was out of focus. This is a cluster of stars originally recorded by Hubble. After correction by computer, this is the same cluster. Hubble is now unveiling new vistas. Dust swirling round a black hole. A pair of colliding galaxies. Two more. A catalogue of distant galaxies, impossible from Earth. A ring of debris before a stellar explosion. Matter jetting from a galactic center. The last gasp of a dying star. The shock waves of a supernova. And finally in Orion, pictures of young stars with planetary disks. Another Hubble first. The five-metre American telescope at Mount Palomar was the biggest in the world until in 1976 the Soviets built a six-metre reflector. It was never satisfactory. Today, despite fears that a bigger one could never work, the American Keck is on test in Hawaii. A ten-metre reflector whose deformation can be corrected by a series of small mirrors, integrated like a jigsaw. The Eskimo Nebula, a trial picture from Keck. And a galaxy. Keck will come on stream in the late 90s with a twin. Meanwhile, at their southern observatory in Chile, the Europeans have developed a competitive design. It's called the New Technology Telescope, compared to Keck a modest mirror, but in resolution as good as Hubble. Light from space hits a mirror deliberately deformed to compensate for atmospheric distortion. The mirror will adjust to any distortion so that a shimmering image like this becomes focused like this. The Europeans plan an array of huge telescopes to work in synchronization. They'll resolve pictures of the outer solar system optical images as good as those sent from probes like Voyager. Radio telescopes work like optical reflectors, collecting information in vast dishes like this American receiver in Puerto Rico. In England, this is the dish at Jodrell Bank. It's big because radio travels in the long waves of the spectrum. If several dishes are linked, their combined scan makes a powerful receiver giving finer detail. Here, the very large array in New Mexico. And in time-lapse, the Parkes dish in Australia. Radio telescopes around the world can be hooked up. They can see what optical instruments cannot. In ultra-hot gas clouds, radio galaxies, pulsars, quasars. A radio picture from the centre of our galaxy, possibly material around a black hole. Jets of gas being expelled from a distant galaxy. Another radio image impossible optically. Red clouds flanking a blue galaxy. Astronomers puzzle over the significance. And here, radar pictures of the asteroid Tutatis. They were achieved in 1992 by using radio in reverse, by beaming signals from Earth and bouncing them off the asteroid. Even the craters of Tutatis can be discerned. In one field, radio has been unsuccessful dishes continually scan the cosmos for signals from other civilizations. So far, there's been no word. <laughs> 